In today's show, I'm looking ahead to Sunday's action in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Yes, ASMR Josh is sort of on the way back, just uh, losing the voice a touch from coaching my first uh, first game of footy today. Big win from the boys, uh, big, uh, big win for Aberfeldy today. In the, uh, in the junior footy, but uh, that's why the voice is a little croaky. Let's talk about what's going on on Sunday in the NBA. First game we're looking at is the Hawks and the Hornets. Fanta Pants, Kevin Herter. For those of you, again, I know my accent can be tough at times. It's not Fanta. It's not Fanta. It's Fanta, the orange-colored drink. But I say Fanta. Fanta Pants, Kevin Herter. Minutes are up for, for Fanta Pants at the moment. Um, we saw when players were healthy that he was basically an afterthought, playing like 20 minutes a night. And then DeAndre Hunter went down and John Collins went down. So we're seeing the minutes push back up for Herder. 30 plus in three of the last five games. Um, so some pretty interesting production from him. Started those games as well over Tony Snell. At least worth a stream at this point. While with Johnny Collins out, the Kerner Clint Capella is playing big minutes as well. 37 in the last game. He is absolutely rocking at the moment. Top 20 player over the last two weeks, Clint Capella. Really good production. Let's see if it can, continues here against the Hornets. Well, with the Hornets... Some pretty interesting names. And one of those names is Jalen McDaniels. I think he needs to be a 12-team league player. I don't know how it all works when Ball and Monk and Haywood all return, which could be all within, yeah, Monk within a week or two and then Ball and Haywood in two to three. And you would have to think that when they those guys come back, McDaniels' role is not going to be anywhere near this. But for now, 12-team league, sure. Jalen McDaniels is a good guy to add. While Cody Zeller playing some pretty good minutes off the bench, 28 and 22 the last two games. Um, producing at a pretty high level. I, I look at him as more of a streamer versus a must-roster player, but a nice 14-team league player nonetheless. On to the second game, the Celtics and the Nuggets. We need to watch this one because we need to watch Rob Williams, the Rock DJ. Tristan Thompson returning has really hurt him. It is significantly capping his upside. Now, Williams only needs 22, 23 minutes to be a must-roster player. He's had 25 and 22 with Thompson back, and in the last game, it was 25 to Thompson and 22 for Williams, which is absolutely a concern. So we want to see how those minute splits look. We want to see if Williams maintains that starting role, but uh, there is a big concern there for sure. Well, I also want to watch Marcus Smart. We have the potential of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum both being out. They're both listed questionable. And I think if even one of those guys is out, Smart is going to take a big step forward. Uh, so I'd be pretty interested to see that. No Ivan Fournier still for Boston. Well, for Denver, it's been a couple of subpar games in a row for Aaron Gordon, as I've maintained all along. I, I don't believe that he is anywhere close to a must roster player. He can be a rosterable guy, but in a 10-teamer category league, I wouldn't be holding on. In a 12-team, I think he is at least droppable when you're trying to open up spots for streaming and to maximize games play. But let's see how he looks in this one. Well, Monty Morris, big game from Morris in the last one. Really big production from him. Um, we don't know if the headmaster, Jamal Murray, is going to play. Morris has come off the bench the last two with Faku Kampato starting, but Morris's role has been pretty solid. Let's see what he's able to do in that role here. The Bucks and the Magic. Well, Milwaukee, we know, um, sat a whole bunch of guys out in their last game. How is that going to look here? But I think most importantly, is Yanni going to play? Giannis and Tentokotomatu. It does not appear that way. He is doubtful. While Middleton, Drew, DiVincenzo, and Lopez, who all were out with fake injuries, uh, resting last game, they are all likely to return. With Yanni out, probably Bob Portis gets another start, and we get some more minutes for Paddy Connaughton. But everyone else should be returning. And then Jeff Teague, who's found a spot in the rotation. 18, 16, and 16 minutes in the last three games before rest of Palooza. He had 28 in that game. He's at least a deeper league guy who occasionally, if you're really desperate, can be a streamer for points and threes. Well, for the Magic, we've seen the last couple of games, Mo Bumba and Wendell Carter Jr. split some minutes. If Bumba gets 20 a night, he is a 12-team league player, and he has played 25 and 22 in the last two games. Now, he is questionable coming into this one with a hip injury, so we want to see that. Uh, Chumura Kiki also uh, questionable here. Two, but Bumba really pushing into that 12-team league discussion. Well, it is going to be Gary Harris's second game for the Magic. He played 18 minutes off the bench in that first game. I think at some point he's going to take over at starting spot from the shot, Dwayne Bacon, because 
it's the shot, Dwayne Bacon. So Gary should be able to step in there. And I don't think he's going to be a 12-team league guy, but I want to see what he's able to deliver. Nice, Gary! Next up, the Pelicans and the Cavs. Kyra Lewis, pretty impressed with him in his first game back, especially defensively. He only played the 21 minutes or so, but with Nikhil Alexander-Walker out, with um, Lonzo Ball out, with Josh Hart out, I think there is a real opportunity. Now, they did start, you know, comically, Najee Marshall and Eric Bledsoe in the in the backcourt last game, but I think Lewis should push up to 25, 26 minutes. And with those guys, Alexander Walker and Hart out long-term, we don't know about Lonzo, but he's been on and off here over his long period of time with his hip injury. There is a real opportunity for Lewis. I also want to watch Jackson Hayes, who is playing alongside Stephen Adams and Billy Hernan Gomez. He's developing a three-point shot. Um, Van Gundy's developing a terrible rotation, but that's beyond the point. So if Hayes can continue to shoot at three, then I like his future a lot more next to Zion Williamson. So I want to watch that. While for Cleveland... The artist formerly known as Tory and Prince has been playing at a higher level. This is a back-to-back for the Cavs. Allen and Nance will be out again, so Prince should be able to get an increased role. And it is a back-to-back, so Kevin Love, there's a real chance that he doesn't play in this one. So Prince could push to 30 minutes and maybe become a stream option. Well, Dean Wade, really impressed with what Wade's been doing. Not as much as I've been impressed with my man, Isaiah Hartenstein. Uh, see how I said impressed there because I was going to say Hartenstein and I got my letters mixed up. Um, Dean Wade, really playing well. Really some stream value here for him in a matchup against the Pelicans. The Raptors and the Knicks. It looks like Ken Birch is going to be available. How they use him is a big question. Will they start him ahead of Boucher? Will they just kick Aaron Baines out of the rotation? Boucher had played 30 minutes, two games in a row, until only 26 against the Cavs. So how he looks here um, and that Bur- those Birch minutes is really, really going to be intriguing. While Malachi Flynn, who has been super impressive, should never have fell that far in the draft, but it's unlikely we get Freddie Van Vliet playing in this one. Um, but there's also a chance that Siakam doesn't play. Or well, Actually, that's not true. There's also a chance Kyle Lowry doesn't play. Siakam rested in the back-to-back against the Cavs on Saturday. But Lowry, there's a chance he's in. There's a chance he's out. What does that mean for Flynn, who has played 30-plus minutes in five consecutive games, but all of those games have been without Lowry and Van Vliet? So if Kyle is back, where does Flynn fit? I- I've been absolutely massively impressed with him, but I just don't know what the minutes are going to look like. For the Knicks, Emmanuel quickly. We saw him on Friday have a really big performance. Will that continue? It's Tom Thibodeau, so who knows? He played 18, 13, and 13 minutes before 28 minutes on Friday. So I, I just don't know. I have no trust in that whatsoever. And same with Reggie Bullock, who went from playing 40 minutes six games ago to playing 19 minutes in the last one. With Reggie, uh, with sorry, Alec Burks cutting into that playing time and with Quickly cutting into that playing time. I find it hard to see that both Bullock and Quickly will play big minutes together, but that is the question mark as to which way that direction is going to go. The Pacers and the Grizzlies. Aaron Holiday has been impressive. He was out of the rotation, replaced by Edmund Sumner earlier this year. But with injuries to Malcolm Brogdon, he forced his way back in. Now he's played 20-plus minutes in four consecutive games, even with Brogdon back in the last game. So Holiday's role, what that means over Sumner, um, over uh, Jeremy Lamb, you know, over even his brother Justin Holiday, whose minutes have dropped considerably. Where does Aaron Holiday fit? But really impressive stuff from him of late. Well, DeMontis Sabonis, just want to keep an eye on him. He hasn't been at his best, dealing with an ankle injury, of course. Only played 33 minutes in that first game back. Well, for Memphis, um, Grayson Allen, I, I do think, is a 12-team league player at the moment, especially with the injuries that they've been suffering through the guards and the wings, and Winslow and Melton are out once again. So we want to see that. And we want to see Kyle Anderson, whose minutes pump up in those scenarios. Brandon Clark will play, but Anderson's clearly outplaying him and putting in yeah, pretty good numbers in 30 minutes a night. The Bulls and the Wolves. I want to watch Kobe White because he has been benched, but he's been getting like this 27-minute roll off the bench, which has some utility as a points and three stream and not a must roster guy for sure. But there is some utility in a 27-minute a night Kobe White. He's played 31, 27, and 29 in each of the last three games. I also want to watch Larry Markinen, who has been a little bit more up and down. 23, 22, 18, and then 27 for minutes. I look at him more as a low 20s guy versus White, who's a high 20s guy. And they're both just streamers, although I do prefer Kobe. For the Wolves, they have been bringing D'Angelo Russell off the bench. Will they continue to do that behind Ricky Rubio and Josh Okogie? I'm not sure, but Russell's putting up putting up strong numbers at the moment. Um, what, 26 minutes in the last game? You think at some point... He is going to move back into that starting line, but will it be at the expense of Rubio or will it be at the expense of Akogi? And then we're watching Rubio, who's played some pretty decent uh, numbers recently. Last game wasn't particularly good with just the 21 minutes, but can he remain a 12-team league guy? For the Spurs and the Mavs, I want to watch Maximum Derek White because he does look at the moment 
to have gotten the shooting a little bit back on track. And that's obviously going to help his overall fantasy value. Um, I'd like to see him handle the ball a little bit more. That's been tough to come by, but minutes... Minutes are strong, and the shooting is getting back on track. And then Lonnie Walker. Now, I don't believe it very much in Lonnie Walker long-term as a player, but I just want to pay a little bit of attention to see if there's anything there that's going to get me excited for his value long-term. For Dallas, Jalen Brunson has been playing well, but it did drop off in the last game. So what's his role going to look like in this one? Brunson played just 22 minutes after three consecutive 30-minute-a-night rolls. I hope it pushes up into those high 20s again. While Muxy Kleber... He's questionable to play in this one. Um, played last game, played 34 minutes, but he's been in and out of the lineup with these injuries. Kleber can be a streamer, especially for blocks and threes. For the Heat and the Blazers, Victor Oladipo is out with this knee injury. Obviously, that is not ideal. Will they use Kendrick Nunn? That's the question here. Um, will Nunn get back into the rotation? Will The Undertaker, Dwayne Dedman, play? They recently signed him as well. So how does he fit in the rotation? Will Nunn be a part of things? And then Trevor Ariza, who continues to start at power forward, it continues to be really underwhelming. He's only that 14 to 16 team league guy. Well, for the Blazers, obviously an absolute monster performance from Ennis Cantor on Saturday, but Yusuf Nurkic should return for this one. And that's going to push Cantor almost definitely to the bench and almost definitely into a smaller role. But with the signing of Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, does that have any impact on Carmelo Anthony? Because his minutes and production has been down lately anyway. Hasn't cracked 20 minutes for three consecutive games. And Damian Lillard hasn't been at his best. Since Tim McCollum's been back, he's been struggling a little bit. So let's just cast a little bit of an eye on, uh, on Dame here. Next game is the Pistons and the Clippers. We want to see whatever nonsense that Dwayne Casey's going to uh, trot out there, especially in regard to Corey Joseph. Now, Joseph has uh, is a guy that obviously has no future on this team, but he's played 32 and 30 minutes in the last two games, and that's in enormously frustrating for the development of some of their young, young guards. Killian Hayes, just 17 minutes on Saturday. Now, I would have to think there's a chance that Hayes does not play in this game, um, and that's going to be a bigger opportunity for Dennis Smith. For the Clippers, no Patrick Beverly, so we should be getting a pretty decent dose of Reggie Jackson. He can become a stream option in that case. And then Nick Batum, whose value has also jumped up of late. So let's see what Batum is able to do. All right, let's look at some streamers now. Dennis Smith, I think a big streamer, um, especially with Killian Hayes likely to rest. Uh, Grayson Allen, a guy that probably should be on a roster anyway, but he's an interesting streamer. Muxy Kleber can be streamed in. Mo Bumba, if he plays. And then Cody Zeller, I think, has some stream ability there too. While if we look for points league, Smith and Bumba options there again. Zeller in the mix. Jalen McDaniels is a good option too. And Gyron Dragic with the absence of Victor Oladipo. He could become a solid stream option. Guys, that'll do it for me. Follow me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Hit the thumbs up and leave your comments down below. Obi's here. He wants to say hi. Say hi, Obi. There he is. All right. He was saying hi from outside the door, obviously, just a little bit before. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.